There we go, folks. <laughs> Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to an evening where apparently I forgot to press a button on the camera there. But hello and welcome. Whew, we've had a bit of time off. We've had a bit of time off, and uh, I I got coronavirus. Uh, I still have it a bit, but I'm doing good. And I thought tonight we would do a live stream as normal on a on a Tuesday night, and ease ourselves back into live streams. So hello. Four keys says first time at a live stream. Wow, your your first time at a live stream is my first COVID live stream. How's that? <laughs> Hello to everybody. Welcome and good evening. I can see all sorts of regulars popping in and around. Of course, it is Tuesday night, so if I've got my ear open for the little one in bed looking after her. She'll be asleep now. She's had a busy day at school. Uh, I hope you're all doing good. Another Minions movie, apparently. You know what? I'm not going to complain about that. I've I've enjoyed every Despicable Me and every Minions movie I've seen. Uh, have they been the best movies in the world? Probably not. Have they been um, at least worth watching? Probably yes. I've enjoyed them very much. So, hello everybody. Um, yes. Yeah, so we've we've had a bit of a gap in the live streams, and things might start going a little bit crazy in the schedules over the next uh, over the next few weeks. So this week is kind of the closest thing we have to a normal week. And if you missed it before I got COVID, I cut my hair. So I've got short hair. Uh, I am, yep, I'm feeling much better now. Thank you very much. I'm still taking it relatively easy, not going nuts and all that sort of thing. I'm making sure I've got plenty of rest to make sure my body is all recovering and all that sort of all that sort of good stuff but we will do a live stream tonight it won't be full length we won't be going for the full two to three hours um, but we will still do one we will um, you can see in the background down there some uh, plastic bottle rocket ships that me and my daughter made uh, a, a number of weeks ago I don't know if you've got I think I've shown you guys but I've the last week or so or about roughly two weeks has been a bit of bit of a blur. Um, my <laughs> my memory of what's going on is all. Oh, you know what? I think I have shown you them. Yeah. Um, need a Jeb model. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe. We were uh, over on the Viewer Plus Discord. We were talking about um, Kerbal Space Program actually on the Discord. Uh, I think that there was a suggestion from Jackamac to. What was the actual suggestion? Because I remember I, I almost did like a counter suggestion. Where's it gone? Uh, ideas for Hellish. Here it is. Um, see some crazy designs from the Steam Workshop, said Jackamack. I said, that's one way of doing it. Uh, but my daughter comes up with crazy designs. And I posted a picture of one of the rockets that she designed. Um, and it's a rocket with uh, six wings. It's, it's yeah, it's it's quite um, quite weird, quite different. <laughs> but uh, yes, Kerbal Space Program will be coming back shortly to the live streams. It is now on my list. Uh, it's one of those things like I put things really far down, and it's like oh, these are going to be coming in the future. But then like they start moving up the list and getting to the point where I'm now actually starting to plan for those live streams and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you played a lot of Open TCD back in the game's uh, day and started recently after watching my videos. Curious about Transport Fever? Never tried it. Um, Transport Fever, fantastic game. If you liked Open TTD, it's highly likely you would like Transport Fever. It's, it, unless the only reason you liked Open TTD is for the retro novel graphics, then you would you would be missing that. But yeah. Um, yeah, make 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 the model in KSP. Maybe I will. We'll see. But yeah, Kerbal Space Program is coming up sometime soon-ish uh, in the live streams. What else is going to be coming up? Uh, the return of Open TTD Season Nine. Uh, I'm going to be putting out the announcement. Say, hey, you've got to get your games to me soon because we're going to have that. Um, so what I'm hoping is that roughly in one month's time that's when we'll go back to season 9. So the deadline for handing that in 
It's probably going to be a roughly three weeks from now. Um, but I need to remember that and announce that. And unfortunately, I'm busy this weekend. Then we've got our charity stream weekend. And then I've got another weekend where I'm completely and utterly busy. So we, we've got some... I've got some busy <laughs> busy times. I'm kind of glad that I'm, I'm getting better now. Because if I wasn't getting better now, it would have messed up a lot of plans. In some ways, I've been lucky. I have had to move a few plans around. And then the kind of the big news about the schedule and what's going on is next week there will not be any transport fever, there will not be any Skyrim, uh, we won't see the return of Kerbal Space Program or Open TTD. We're going to have a we're going to have our second go at running an Arc server. So last time I did this a, a long time ago now, it went terribly wrong. Um, the, and I won't go into the details just because it's not particularly interesting but basically uh, we tried to run a server it, it it kind of worked so we went with it and then it all just fell to pieces um, I'm happy to confirm that we have an ARC server now for the viewer plus subscribers uh, I've been on that server I've I got you know the chest tested the game tested it's running made sure I can know the basic controls, I've even changed around a couple of key bindings and I'm pretty happy, pretty happy with uh, how it's running and the server. A uh, quick shout out to Brandon sir, who has been configuring the server for us on, our, on my behalf setting up the mods that we're going to use on there. So Brandon I'm going to need a list of the mods from you so that we can um, when somebody inevitably asks what we're using, we know we've got a list that we can provide. So all next week, the live streams will be the ARC server launch, and we'll be having an extra live stream. It's all pinned on the ARC. Brilliant. Well done, Brandon. Um, so on Monday night will be our first live stream from 8 o'clock UK time, and then second live stream on the Tuesday and third live stream on the Thursday so it's the normal two slots plus the Monday we're gonna have three and then it is the charity live stream on the Saturday so we're actually having four live streams next week we'll be gonna be having a triple arc server launch plus a charity live stream of course we've got a massive public open TTD game in that so if you want to play open TTD with me and the other people you need to make sure you come along to that. So the details about that are on the website. They're on my social media. I've been posting it out. I'm going to post it out a bit more because I've got a bit, more, a few more things to confirm. I've got the schedule to confirm for the event, but it's going to start from midday UK time on on the Saturday, uh, the ninth, isn't it? Is it the ninth? Pretty sure it's the ninth. Um, Jack and Mike says I like the variety games for the championship. Yeah, I think we've got a good set of games this year. Like. Um, and I think we've got some good lengths and challenges, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, one of the things I haven't announced yet, but has been decided, is what the prize will be. So the prize will be... Uh, oh, God, actually, I need to double-check something before I announce that. You know what? I'm going to look for that now, because it won't take me long just to check it. Um... Uh, no... Ah, I'm going to have to look on the website. Yes, 11 o'clock UTC is when the event will start. So the stream will probably start like maybe 15 minutes early. Um, it, the stream will start slightly early to allow for people to gather. It's going to be a public game of Open TTD. So it's going to be one of those ones where we just post the details like on Discord or something and everybody just piles in. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, where is it gone? Where's the prize? I'm, I could have sworn I had the prize around here somewhere. Where is it? Basically, it's Steam credit. <laughs> but I can't remember how much it was, and I had it noted down, and I can't find out the quantities of the denominations of what they give I'm not sure I think it's 30 pounds of steam vouchers 
Don't quote me on that until I can find it out. I'll do an announcement on social media. So there we go, folks. Um, I've not been well, but now we're back. I'm getting better. Um, back to a sort of a normal short live stream schedule this uh, this week. Next week is ARC and the charity event. And after that, in the short future-ish, we can expect the return of Kerbal Space Program and Open TTD and... After that, I have already begun formulating what the new schedule of live streams will look like. And if you want to be part of that discussion, uh, you can come down to the Ideas channel if you've got any ideas on the Discord. There we go. Well, I felt like it was worth bringing people up to date with so much that's going on and also um, all the changes and the fact that we haven't spoken for a, few, for a while. So I think that'll do for now. If anybody's got any questions about what's going on, the charity event, and all that sort of stuff, do feel free to let me know in the chat. But we're going to get um, Transport Fever 2 open. We're going to get the game loaded. And as per the title of the live stream, we're going to have a, a new big main line. So we've got a loop line and we've got like a triangle. We've got a, a loop main line and a triangular main line. Um... That's a bit quiet in my headset. Maybe it's just because it's not on my ear properly. Hmm, strange. Uh, is the family okay or have you shared it with each other? The uh, family's fine. Um, I've been sleeping in my bedroom by myself i've been keeping the distance from the family um tomorrow will be day 10 since i got it so um in theory i won't be contagious anymore according to our national health website it's like um you, you can be i'm pretty sure the quote was you can be contagious for up to 10 days so in theory from tomorrow I'll no longer be contagious, or I would have no longer been contagious. So they're all good. Thank you very much for asking. What number of episode is this? Nineteen? Is this live stream nineteen? I, I can't see. Where is it? Yes, we're on live stream nineteen. Sometimes I forget, and I f I feel like we've been playing Transport Fever Two longer than just just the last eighteen live streams. But, here we go. Shadow's here watching on YouTube. Hello, Shadow. Welcome. We're just loading the game. I've just been telling everybody about like what's happened recently and what we can expect in the live streams coming up. The only, the only thing with Kerbal Space Program is the camera that I used to use for joystick cam is now Cam 2. There's Cam 2 which we use sometimes for various different things. So I can no longer use that camera as joystick cam. So I think I might just have to point it downwards a bit. <laughs> we'll have to make do? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Let's get ourselves re-familiarised quickly with what's going on. On this side of the world, we've got three major towns, or now you may want to call them cities. We've got Pickering down here that has an airport, and we've got a kind of triangular main line junction here that separates Pickering from Wellington and from Bradnich. And all three have both of the two required cargoes being delivered to them. And they also have their own tram network. Uh, there is a tram. Brandon says, does it have a cathedral? I think that's what makes it a city. I think that is either like a, a legend slash wives tale rather than fact. Or maybe it was true at some point and now is no longer the case. I think here in the UK there is a list of cities and if you want a town to be a city you have to submit it for consideration of being called a city, but I'm not sure. Um, 
So, yeah, we've got those three towns, and they're all supplied by all three things. And then we've got this airport that links the, the kind of triangular main line to, via this airport, our loop lines, which is a little bit difficult to see, but if I go into this mode... It's still relatively difficult to see, but you can see the pink and purple lines going around in a loop. The blue line's where our aircraft's going. We've got some boats over here that are, you know, the boats are, the ships are actually doing good money. Uh, I think each line is making nearly a million. It's not too bad. And we've got, what else have we got? We've got various different resources down here, which are mostly just supplying Bradnich and the other towns with what they need. Last time we spent a lot of money uh, upgrading a lot of vehicles. So we upgraded this one and the line that it's travelling on. Did we upgrade the, the Lego line? Yep, we upgraded the Lego line as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that all goes. MGS Book says, Joystick cam isn't too important for you. Also, the stream is buffering so often only for you? I'm just going to look at the, the stuff on my side. I'm getting zero drop frames. We're coming out 60 frames per second. Yep, looks all good on my side as well. Okay, maybe it's just a you problem. Uh, Kigef says, I always assumed a city was based on the number of inhabitants. I don't think it is. No. Uh, I don't think... Let, let, hang on. Right, okay. Let's look it up. Right, we're going on a tangent, everybody. It is tangent time. Well, here we go. It's tangent time. Okay, tangent time, everybody. <laughs> I've been waiting two live streams to use that. <laughs> Thank you very much to Jack and Mac who made that little video. <laughs> We're going to have more of that sort of stuff. I love those sort of silly things. It's kind of the kind of things that you may actually have on like a professional show. But you know what? That <laughs> It's just a bit of silly fun. What makes a city a city? Brackets UK. Okay. According to common the Commons Library Parliament UK, so it appears to be probably a reputable source on the subject. A city status in the UK can be associated with having a cathedral or a university. Um, a particular form of local government or having a pop large population okay so there's several factors that go to making it say it may be become a city although any of these may be used as a to to justify the popular use of the term city in formal terms uk city status is granted by the monarch on the advice of ministers so basically, ministers say, oh, that's a city now. And that's it. So there you go. It's not a particular, it's not whether it has a cathedral. It may have been at some point in history. It may have not been the size, of, it, it, it isn't the size of the population. It's just if the monarch says it is. So there we go. Silly animations are the best animations, yes. Anyway, that is the end of tangent time right now. Let's go back to the game. That's what it is in the UK, obviously. Around the, around the world, it's probably different. Okay. Um, so everything is running smoothly. That I can tell. Money is not the best at the moment. I don't know why. I th Let's have a look at the lines tool. 
here we go. Let's look at the balance of them. Yeah, okay, so the good thing is, is that a few things like our aeroplanes, our trucks, and some of the train services are making good money. In fact, did I just say, the main loop anti-clockwise is actually making over a million. That is fantastic. Uh, it does appear to be that one of the shuttle trains is missing a carriage. But at the other end of the scale, we've got the anti the main loop clockwise doing minus three million. And the Lego shuttles are doing minus. They were making money before. They were. They were making good money before. And we've still got some old steam trains as well. So God, the God Brick service isn't making any money, but I think that is relatively new. So overall, I don't know what our operating profit's like. Can we? So what's investments is vehicles, road transport. So okay, so these numbers up here um, are the operating profit for road, rail, water, and air. It's it separates out the investments. I think so infrastructure tracks roads and vehicles that's what we would call the non operating profit and then it smacks the loan on which we haven't got any of so last year um, we haven't had a full year this year what where are we we're in June so if we look at 96 and 97 we were making 19 million on air and f just under 5 million on the railroad then last year we made nothing on the railroad. Absolutely nothing on the railroad. Um, but this year we're doing 6.4 million so far. So that's looking really good. It's looking better than the aircraft. Ooh, okay. See, look, the water's actually making money. Um, Me book says wasn't expecting the the clockwise loop to do that bad. The main loop clockwise will get better when it's almost full with people. Yeah, there is one big difference between the loop, uh, the anti-clockwise and clockwise. So there is a line that comes through this station here. And you can see where we've got the Air Kemp shuttle train in there right now. Sorry, the Kemp Air shuttle. This is the anti-clockwise one. So which one, which one was doing well? Okay, so the clockwise one's doing all right, if I remember correctly. Mainline, anti-clockwise, and clockwise. Yeah, so the anti-clockwise one is the what the train one. The anti-clockwise one is the train that comes through the station that's connected to the airport. The other direction doesn't. That one comes under this hill and down to this town, God Manchester. There's not a lot happening here. Although, we are now delivering, I think, bricks through our lorry system. <laughs> we, we, we could have a few different animations for various different things. I mean, we can't have too many, because otherwise my my board, this this thing down here, if I can just raise it slightly without disconnecting it, would get too full of the various different things that could, could possibly be on it. I mean, I've got some games on here that I don't really use, actually, because the old Kerbal Space program's on there and Space Engineers, so they could be moved off. Um, and I've got some text bits on there that I need to really kind of redo. Um, but, yeah. Can it have folders? Um, I don't think it can have folders, but it can have pages. I just use one page because I don't want to have to navigate between pages when I want to mute myself before I or anything like that uh, okay anyway um, so we've kind of caught up with what's going on what's happening where the money is going up that's the important thing the money's going up so I think what we'll do is we need to decide where this main lines going okay I want it to be big I want it to be long, I want it to be relatively straight. We don't really have a map view or a map in this in this game, do we? Which would have been helpful. I suppose we could change the like the look of it to make it easier maybe. 
not sure. Um, but the idea is, is that I was thinking that we have a big long main line from somewhere to somewhere else. Uh, you say, I would love a setup um, like this. I think I need some new screens. Uh, only have two very old 24 inches. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do what I do, I mean, look at my website and if you go to the About Me section, I've listed the exact monitors that I use. But for this setup, the monitor in the middle is a large monitor and it runs at 1440p. Um, and But that runs at 140 something hertz. So it's brilliant for gaming because you've got the you've got higher um, refresh rate than the 60 hertz that you would normally get on a lot of monitors, whereas the side monitors are only 60 hertz, but they're 4K and sideways. So if I grab the chat, you can see the chat is taking up one third of this vertical window, and put it on the main screen. You can and let go. You can see that it's actually taking up a lot of that screen. So one third of 4K vertical takes up a good chunk of a 1440p. So you get a lot on those side monitors, and I've got one each side. So I suppose really that could have been a well here we go. Wait. But um, that was just a short thing. That was just a short thing. Uh, so we need to decide where it's going to go, and I don't know where I'm going to decide. Um, I feel like it would be nice if either end of the new main line hooked up to something that already has it. Um, yeah, we'll only use tangent time when we're going to completely derail the, the live stream. We're off talking about something else. I think, I mean, we. I don't want to have lots of stops on this new main line because I want to use the high speed bullet train. And I don't want it to, like, have to keep speeding up and slowing down all the time. But then the the question is, where where should it go? Um, we are we have got connections to Eccles, but that's only by passenger hovercraft, which is fine. We could come over this side of the world. We haven't done hardly anything down here. The only thing that we've got is our Lego loop a little bit further down. But to me, I feel like I should just connect up a couple of large towns. But maybe we're just like a new station or something. So maybe if I connect up Pickering with Bromyard and Winslow. That would be a big long, a big long line, wouldn't it? Oh my goodness, ten vehicles are available. We've got all sorts of aircraft. What looks like a bendy tram of some sort. Uh, an expensive uh, freight electric train. There's all sorts there. Nothing that really grabbed my fancy though, unless we're going to upgrade our aircraft. But I don't think we will. I. Th at the minute, is is the year two thousand? Oh, nice. That's cool. I didn't notice. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to put a brand new railway line from like this end of the loop line all the way down to Pickering, because that will just kind of knit the two lines together with a brand new line. And for the most part, I think we can get. Can think we can get down there it's a lot of flat land if we come down from this end we've got a mountain on a right to avoid but it's not that close then we've got a mountain on the left that we can come round and then we're going across a lot of flat land but the problem here apart from crashing into towns will be that we've got a body of water to deal with how we deal with that, I am not sure. And then we've got to get into Pickering. And I don't want to come in right next to this main line because it's getting it's gonna get way too congested. Congested? Congested. Oh, that's better. Um 
So I think we'll be coming down this side. We'll have to cut through a little bit of the farm and then bring ourselves into a station over here. Um, maybe we can kind of get it close to the tram route. I don't know. I guess, I guess let's do it, right? Makes sense that we just do it. We're not going to just hang around here forever and not do it. So I think what we'll do is we've got a lot of tall buildings around here, a lot of commercial, uh, residential around here. We'll choose... Oh, no, they are commercial buildings. Okay, I didn't know they were commercial. These have got commercial and residential. So we'll choose maybe one of the smaller residentials and we'll put a terminus station in. And we'll go with a four track, or will we? I don't know. Let's go with the full length, high speed as well. Wow, that is a huge station. Oh, is that too long? I mean, it is a very long station, isn't it? It does look a bit... Does it not look a bit ridiculous? I kind of like it. Let's do the ridiculous station. Okay, so to do the ridiculous station, we're going to have to remove all of these buildings to leave room. And then we're going to have to back it up. I mean, it does serve most of the town, especially on this side, so that's okay. <laughs> Half the distance is already covered by just placing the station. Timman says, um, too bad you can't curve the stations. Interesting thought. Can I get it so only one, st on one building will be removed? No, I can't. Okay, never mind then. There we go. So what I might do is I might connect the middle two up here as part of the main line and then spur the other two off as alternate platforms maybe? We shall see. Let's just check. Ah, oh, it's pointing in the wrong direction. Try again. Well, if we keep going in that straight line, we're going to hit that hill. We want to go off in this direction. Should be able to fit it in the same... Oh, There we go. Much better. Pointing straight to where we want to. Need some road connections at the other end. Yeah, some road connections down here will do. We'll, we'll put in some buildings and some street connections. It's a very long station, Brandon. So let's see. If we put some passenger buildings on, we could put a big passenger building on. I could put a big one in there and it would almost connect up with the road. Can I put a small one in here? I can. Okay, so we can just put one here, and then for symmetry, one there. And we'll figure out the roads later. Yep, that works for me. So now, we can see that it covers quite a lot of the town. There is a little bit of overlap. We're probably going to have to put some trams in. Um, what's that? That's a medium country road. There we go. Just tidy that up. Okay, so that's one station one side. Let's now zoom down to Pickering and do the other side. Okay. So, where are we going to put it? I feel like here is going to be a good place.
like that or like that you know it's gonna capture a lot of the inner city there I think it's just a good place we're gonna have to go around that farm though so something like that so let's do that let's bulldoze these two bits of road pop our station in bring it down just a little bit there we go and we'll upgrade this one I think we'll put the side buildings a little bit further back unlike the other one where they were at the end because don't think there's a lot of point here and now we've got to fix the ring road but what we're going to do with this ring road we've got to get these two bits to connect up I mean really should I go for another bridge probably let's see was it an extra large street tunnel maybe a tunnel I don't think I can bridge over buildings oh what do you know I can wow okay so that's what the bridge would look like it looks something like that that's the wrong road Bear me a second, folks. I've put the wrong road on it. Okay, let me try again. Okay, so that is what the bridge would look like. To be honest, that's my favourite at the minute. Um, but there are different types of bridges. So we could use that one, which I think fits the station really well. Uh, there's this one, which again works well with the station. Got a bit of a weird suspension bridge there. Oh, look at that. Oh my gracious. Oh, that is fantastic, is it not? Anyway, that's what a bridge would look like. And then if we went for tunnel, that's what a tunnel would look like. So I'll leave that decision down to you guys. We'll pop that in in a bit. I'm going to do a bit of tidying up with the roads over here. So I'm going to get rid of this. I think, yeah, we're going to have to expand the road in a slightly different direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the medium country road here, like that. There we go. Um, there we go. So Brandon says that's a nice bridge, Timman Bridge. That is a proper bridge, beautiful bridge, huge suspension bridge. That beats open TDD. <laughs> okay, people definitely like the bridge. Okay let's go pop that bridge in so which one was we doing it was the large street okay didn't come out like that last time interesting <laughs> let's try again oh there we go so there's the large street we go up and up swap it into the suspension and pay for it oh yeah imagine coming into that station though with that bridge over it I love that, that's great okay so I guess now I need to figure out how the railway line is going to work here now this is the bit that I haven't thought through so I, what I was going to do is like a nice straight bit of track which I'll do like is that three fields? Where's the third field? Two fields will be removed. Okay, so they're just not highlighting properly. Anyway. So I was going to do one bit of track going out, and then another bit of track kind of 
coming from the line so we've got a second line next to it and then I was going to do this but I was going to get as close as I can without like knocking the speeds down so that one's got 190, uh, 292 so I was going to say no just take that last bit off and do it again and then somehow have a crossover for that and then have the outside lines for it as well wish you could do the same in open ttd you definitely can't you can't bridge over anything like industries yeah like brandon said no houses no stations no industries yeah and the symmetry there yeah the symmetry just worked really well i mean it's not like like the middle of the bridge doesn't perpendicularly bisect the station i mean it doesn't even bisect the station properly um but it just like it's not you come to the top and look down it's not right but you just look at it and it just looks good <laughs> yes you can tunnel under a coal mine so what i was thinking was is that we bring these out like roughly at the same angles like this and then we bring them in and across Let's see if I can get this right without messing it up. Will it let me do that? It will. And then we can add this as a switched double slip. Okay, that works well for me. Now, obviously, the speeds here aren't going to be that great. But, in theory... We, if we do a preference of the inside two platforms with the outside two platforms being kind of like the extra or overflow that'll work nice the others also need to be door slip what, what do they I don't think they do oh no you are totally right there, Egg. Thank you. Yes. Bad logic from me. They needed to be double uh, slip sw switched slips. What's it called? Double slip switch. Yes. So here, on this junction, we've got a triple double slip switch. Okay, so that's this side. Let's just make that link up to there. And then we're going to go all the way down here and do the same. Just check the trajectory and the hills here. Okay, so as long as we come to the right-hand side of that coal mine, um, that forest will be all right. So we'll just do that to begin with. And then we bring this in. try saying that three times fast I can't even remember what it was it was a triple double something something slip switch triple double slip switch is that it okay can I make that come forward a little bit more no look that little bit that I just put on there was just too much Can you just put a road on the end of a piece of track? No. It snaps to it like you like you can. But if you try and just put a straight piece of road on the end, it doesn't work. But it does snap to it like it would. Oh. There we go. That's better.
So now let's uh, do those special slip switches. Oh my goodness, how did I do this? Did I do it so that it came out a little bit first? I think I did, didn't I? Oh my goodness. Triple double slip switch. There we go, that was it. Yes, yes, and yes. There we go. Triple double slip switch, triple double slip switch, triple double slip switch. That nearly went wrong. <laughs> Not doing that again. All right. Okay. So now we've got the we've got the two stations. We decide we decided where the line was going to go. We've got the two stations in. We've connected the stations up with some track. Now we have to connect the two bits of track together. And it actually looks like it's going to be relatively straightforward. We're going to have to come to the right hand side of this coal mine here. So I'll probably get rid of. That doesn't sound right in the headphones. Uh, bear me a second, folks. Just double checking something on the sounds here. I think I've got a problem. I'm just going to I'm just going to take a quick break and check some sound settings. I will be right back in just a couple of minutes. Let's have a look at these new vehicles then. Oh, proper trucks. I like that. I love the way that the rear actually does articulate. Uh. What? Oh, there you are. Oh no, there's another one. Did I just not hit it? Oh, it's so fast moving. I need to heal. What is... Well, I got shot. The new Master Hellish. Don't <laughs> <laughs> turn the fan on. I'm here. Hello. Hello, everybody. It's it's. Woo! <laughs> did, did you like that? <laughs> oh, let's sort this this rest. There we are. That's that's the right way around now. Oh, retro hellish hair. It's, it's a little bit retro for me, isn't it? <laughs> it is much shorter. I had a lot cut off. We've got the two stations. We decide. Okay, folks, I'm back. I I did have a problem with the the sound, and it was mostly because um, the switch on the headphones is dodgy. So there we go. Um, there's some suggestions coming in would, uh, about Open TTD series. I mean, we are planning Open TTD series 10, so if you've got ideas for that, please pop them in the ideas channel on the Discord. There we go. These refund sounds sound correct in my headphones now. It is a dodgy switch, and actually, 
I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I actually have replacement switches. Which I will attempt to show you. One of them. It's a relatively interesting switch. No, they're not double slip switches. Right, the story of my headphones. Well, here we go. It's tangent time. Okay, folks. So, what it is, is that these aren't actually my original Logitech G935s. Okay, my original Logitech G935s are here. And these are the ones that uh, I originally requ uh, acquired, okay? And um, these ones developed a fault with the power switch here. And the, the fault with the power switch meant that one of the earpieces just cut in and out, completely in and out. Like, I think the right-hand side one always worked, and the left-hand side one only worked if like the switch was in just the right position so I dismantled them to take a good look at the switch and when I I had a look at it and I thought maybe it's a loose connection maybe just me poking around will help fix it and when I put it back together to test again the left ear no longer works at all that so this set is bust spares this is for spares now I'm going to try and repair this, and I'm going to do a vlog about that. So if you don't see my second channel, maybe head out to the website uh, and go and have a look at my second channel because I'm going to be putting something on there about that. And then what I did is I purchased these ones, and I purchased them for £5 plus £5 shipping because they don't work properly. Funny story... The power switch is dodgy. <laughs> so for this one, if the power switch is just not in the right place, you lose the bass in the sound. So you only get like the treble in the noise, which is what I was fiddling around with um, when I went into that break. I heard when I was deleting the track, it was like, that doesn't sound right. It sounds tinny. Um, so... Um, so this one's got a dodgy switch. When I thought the first one had a dodgy, dodgy switch, which it probably still does, I bought this. A bag of switches. And this is the on-off switch which is inside the headphones. Um, and I think I posted an image on the Discord of how this one works but it's a little bit interesting um, it's got a it's an on off switch and it's got a slide uh, yeah slide switch on the side there okay but this isn't just like on and off it's on and on so it's a toggle it's an on on switch but it's not just one on on switch it's got four pairs of connections on the bottom so there are four lots of ground on or on and that is what is inside these headphones and I may right if I can fix my original headphones so that they're in fully working order what I will probably do is try and replace the switch on these ones to make these ones fully working. But I don't want to ruin these ones and not have some decent headphones before I fix the other ones. Uh, these I got 10 switches. I only really needed one, but they came in a pack of 10. I think these ones cost me £4. And I also, because these were second-hand... The the top uh, the top bit and the two earpieces I've um, replaced. So the headset was five pound. The postage was five pound. I've bought new pads, which was ten pound. So it's cost me twenty pounds for a complete new for a, a new headset 
which is nearly completely working. Just got a bit of a funny switch. And I'll show you this. This is why I replaced it. I thought the extra £10 is was going to be worth replacing this headband bit. It was in quite poor condition. And that's one of the reasons why it was so cheap. So I bought it uh, off Facebook Marketplace. So after buying it and charging it up and putting my special adapter in for the charging port and replacing the soft parts of it, £20 I've got a new pair of £160 headphones with a, with a small fault. So there we go. Um, it's a quadruple double on on switch. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right the right name for it. Um, but yeah, it, it's I tested it uh, and looked. I, I actually got the switch out in the headphones, and I had a look at it. I got the uh, the multimeter on it, and yes, it's um, it's got a ground or an in, and then two outs, and the switch goes between the two outs. It switches between the two outs. But then you've got that four times. So that's how that switch works. Why? it Right, okay, this is the interesting bit. When I was looking at the circuitry, and I only understand very basic stuff about this, it looks like multiple things within the headphones are all being switched on or off at the same time. So, for example, like... I don't know, but you might be able to switch, like, for example, the lighting system in the headset that might have its own on off switch separate to the rest separate to maybe the speakers in the headphones and sometimes you might want to do that because you don't want to put everything through the same on off switch especially if you're providing maybe high voltage power to the lights and the then the speakers have really low voltages going through them to transmit the sound um I don't know if that is definitely the reason why. Maybe somebody who knows electronics better than me might be able to say. But um, I think that's why you would want a multi-poled on switch so that you can switch lots of things on and off at the same time. That would also explain why if that switch is faulty, certain aspects of the headset might work and others might not. So that is kind of like the short story of my headphone woes. I uh, I did actually a YouTube short about it, and I'm going to be doing a few vlogs about it. But when I get round to that, I have no idea. I've got a list as long as my arm. Literally, I've got a list on Excel that goes down that far um, of videos that I'm planning for both channels, all, all my channels. I've already got 17 videos in progress right now at various different stages, whether it's writing scripts or shooting bits of video for or this, that and the other. So there we go. Busy. And, and of course, I've been busy with COVID and stuff. Anyway, should we get back to a bit of uh, transport fever, shall we? That That's going to be the an at the end of uh, tangent time for now. <laughs> um... Okay, so we got this little bit of railway line and I wanted to uh, bend it around so that it doesn't crash into whatever that is. We did have a question about it visiting a town on the way and somebody said that it would slow the train down too much. That's true. These trains take a long time to get up to high speed and then take a long time to get back down again from high speed. Um, I'm just looking from where I am. I am going to be able to make it between the coal mine and the farm, but I am going to go closest to the coal mine if I can. So we'll take that. Yep, that looks good to me. Now we need an animation for the end of tangent time. Yeah, rejoining the main line. Okay, so we've managed to make it to here. Well, we've got to get down there. So the next problem uh, for this main line is going to be... I think I've got a hair on my mouth. Yeah, I don't know. 
Um, he's going to he's going to be going over these lines, which is not really too much of a problem because we can just delete some of this and have a very gentle bridge. I guess we're going to have to have a bridge over the water, aren't we? And we don't want to go too far away from this town because then we'll be bending out way too far. Um, what if we just like just go up? Let's do something like that as an example and just see if it works. No. Okay. I mean, I don't know what the maximum speed for the bridges are. Right, let's try again. There we go. Look, we've got a bit of bridge going on here. So the maximum speed for that bridge is 90. That one's 300. That's 180. That's 300. That's 180. That's 90. So really, the only options are the flat bridge or the suspension bridge and I don't think this is an appropriate place to use the suspension bridge so let's do that it looks like we need to make it go higher oh no wait there we go that looks like it might be all right We, we're not going to hit the logging camp, are we? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Wow. That went up very high. Why has it gone up so high? I just ruined the farmer's access to the beach. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. It's not not a problem at all. Okay, I think I'm going to get rid of the last segments here and just try and keep it down a little bit more. Um have a look at this okay so here it's level on the land the bridge comes up over the water and then down for that bit it's a massive long arc I like that because it fits in with arc our game of the week next week where we're going to be doing our server launch And that's cost us three million. I think it's at this time of the game that we can afford to do this though, isn't it? We haven't completely destroyed like the hillside or anything, have we? And that does look cool. Right, okay. And then in theory I should just be able to connect these two up. And that's our one massive big new main line. make sure it's actually connected okay there is that's all fine um, not quite sure what's happening with the road in hillside there but we'll fix that afterwards yes um, 
Which side did I do? Okay, I thought I'd done the wrong, like, the inside to the outside then or something. Okay, so if we connect that up there, that's fine. And then these horrible bits of road here, we'll get rid of them. We'll do the same here. Oh, I didn't mean to get that rid of that big bit of road. That was a little bit more road than I was planning on getting rid of, actually. Oh, on of mine. So instead of it being silly and down like that, we can just do this. Which apparently is fine. I like that, actually. Yeah, that pillar was terrible. It was absolutely terrible, wasn't it? Now, this one isn't quite as bumpy, so we might struggle a little bit more here. Okay, that works for me. What we do need to do is smooth off the land, though, so... Smoothing tool. Okay, something's not right there. Got a bit of an embankment going on. How much money we got? 85 million, that's fine. Oh, you know what? what's going on here? We've got patches of water showing up. And I don't know why. Oh my goodness. Let's do the opposite there. Uh. set the height of the flatten tool correctly. Um, I'm not sure why the coast is appearing here. It's a bit weird. Um, There's a bit of a glitchy thing going on there. Might have to just manually... There we go. An underground reservoir. Uh, maybe an aquifer. Yeah, maybe. Okay, that section's going to be okay, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. The only thing is, is that these medium, medium country roads want improving around here. There we go. Just so it matches up a little bit better. Right, let's have a look at this one. Mm, that one's much better. That one's much better than the others. So, we'll just smooth that. Turn the strength down a little bit. See, that's much better. Found the groundwater level. We really did, didn't we? Okay, and now we're going to need... Um, a, a, what do you call it? So we'll put that in the hills. Hang on a minute. Which way around are we going in this series? We're driving on the left, aren't we, with our trains? Yeah, driving on the left with our trains. Okay, in which case, we'll just get, like, a spur off the main line here. That's where we'll just put the depot on the end. Yep. There we go. 
sorted. Signals, yes, we definitely need signals. We're going to start with one directional signals at the end. Like that. And we'll go down to the other end and do exactly the same. And then we just need to divide the line up. So we can just go into the middle. And then the middle of that. And the middle of that. And this, how many times do you want to divide it up? I don't think we're going to need that many trains going on this line. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. But we do need a few signals. Definitely need a few. There we go. That should be enough. Relatively evenly spread along that new line. J Bay, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, one thing we are going to do though is actually build it as a line, so new line. We're going to be going from this station all the way down to that station and back again. But at either end, we're going to designate the platforms better. So for this one, we don't want that out of platform. I reckon we'll come into platform three and then we'll give it an optional of plat platform four if platform three is busy. And then at the other end, we'll do something similar. So we'll say platform three there with the option of platform four, if it's busy. Now these stations are probably twice as big as what they really needed to be, but like if we want to put another line in here, we've got room for it. I didn't want to make it too small and then have to expand it later. So now, now we're going to have to try and afford a train to put on this line and see if it actually makes any money. So, are we going to go with the TGV that travels at 300 or the new ICE-1? Now it doesn't travel quite as fast, but, and it costs more to run, have all the tracks electrified and high speed, have at least 100 kilometers of tracks. Hey, achievements are all done. Um, yeah, it costs slightly more to buy, costs slightly more to run, um, but it's got more pulling power, so in theory, gets up to top speed quicker. But its top speed is also lower. I think we should go full speed. TVG, all the way. Yeah, 58 million it's going to cost us. And we'll see how bad or does so <laughs> Brandon says so the TGV is just better well the loading speed on the TVG is 16 yeah capacity is 162 compared to 144 so the ICE has a larger capacity and it has more power so it should get up to its top speeds quicker Chat's basically saying TGV. Okay, there we go. We'll put that on our brand new line. And we'll have a good close look at it. So in this series, oh my goodness, it cost us nearly just a million for it to come out of the depot. Here we go. 
How many train? How many trains are there in game? Do you mean different types of trains? Just one second, or do you mean how many trains have we got? Because that's two different questions, and we have got. that many trains and train number one as it is apparently called is just entering the station now now there's probably nobody waiting that is correct there is absolutely and utterly nobody waiting yet um, but we also have to adjust the trams at either end and it costs us just like another million Okay, we're actually going to watch its journey because I'm interested to know what this line looks like. And we can also see what the speed is in the bottom left hand corner. Different types. There's quite a few different types. So its speed gets stuck at 71 kilometers an hour as it goes through that junction. But as soon as the back of the train comes out of that junction, I reckon it's going to start, yeah, it's going to start increasing in speed now. DJ Egg says, uh, IRL, there would be lots of people for the first train. You know what? I think there would be lots of people for this first train. So we're going past the logging camp. We're only up to 120 kilometers an hour, and we haven't even gone past the coal mine yet. But yeah, this is like a brand new line, it's doing a brand new service, it's going right across the country, like from coast to coast pretty much, this line. It's pretty much a coast to coast line. This is, I think, the only level crossing. And at 152 kilometers an hour, we're not even up to half of our top speed yet. Oh, I can see an aircraft in the distance. Little Shadows here watching on YouTube. Hello, welcome, good evening. I saw a deer. Although I think we're going a little bit down speed, uh, downhill now. And uh, we've hit 180 kilometers an hour. See, we haven't even got to our top speed. But we're in the lower sections now, going under the bridges. Okay, that's 200, 200 kilometers an hour. So we're at two thirds of our max speed. And we're probably two thirds of the way there. We're going over the lake now. Uh, do we even think this is going to make it to top speed by the time it gets to Pickering? I think it might do as we come over the back, off the back of this um, drop here. So the, the, uh, the line into Pickering is a drop. Cities too close. It's going from one end of the map to the other. 227. Here's the uh, the iconic bridge up ahead. You know what? We're not going to do it. It's not going to hit top speed. We need the other train. We need the train that's slower and more powerful. Look, it's starting to slow down. We need the other train. We need the one that's more powerful with a with a less top speed. Well there we go folks. Uh, and a grand total I hate to say it of four people got on the train. Um Let's do manage vehicle. Replace selected. You saw a person waiting. We're going to replace it with this one. It's going to cost us uh, 11 grand more. It has a higher capacity and a slightly slower speed, but a much better traction effort. There we go. That looks like the business for us. Okay, let's let that train go to the other end and let's see if we need to sort out the tram lines. 
actually I don't think we need to sort out the tram lines too much we already have a tram stop here in Victoria Road which is right near the station so if we just go into um, buildings bus slash tram stop and we get rid of those ones and then put them back in again will it snap to the right location okay let's try again Where are the trams? I can't see any trams. Oh, there's one. Manage the line is... Oh no, it did work. It did work. It did move the tram service. So that's fine. The tram service did move to that part of the street. Kind of wishing that this Richmond Road was much closer over here but never mind um, Jbay says they should have a game where a train only runs once a certain amount of tickets are sold I mean you kind of have that here where you can specify the, the a full load or a percentage of the load uh, let's go to the other side now and let's have a look what we got going around this town we've got a bus circuit okay I think what we really need to do is just a tram stops between those two places so we'll sort that out next time for now what we'll do is that we will just put another bus stop exactly opposite the train station there we will upgrade this bus stop and then we'll just change the bus routes like this no wait There we go, so it's going between the two stations. And then we can just get rid of that one because we don't need it. Jobs are good. Or have the amount of cars needed for the amount of passengers. Yeah, I mean, you can change the amount of cars. So with the, a lot of the smaller trains, you can choose how many carriages are on it. It's, it's much better. Um, you're right Brandon it's not really an efficient route but never mind we're going to replace it with trams next time so I don't care um, but with these particular trains like the one that's just arriving now uh, they come as a particular length of train I think you can add more to them oh my goodness this train's cost us 6 million so far but there are now 4 people waiting on the platform to make this journey And it did make a little bit of money there. Oh, wow. No, there's, there was not four people on the platform. There was 25 people on the platform. Okay, so let's compare this train to the other one. So the other one didn't make its top speed. I think it got to about 250, 260 kilometers an hour. This one has a top speed of 280, if I remember correctly. And it carries more passengers, but it's got more power. So I think it's going to get to that top speed quicker. So I'm hoping that by the time we get halfway, we will have made our top speed. And therefore get more money because we did more of the journey quicker. So we're already 100 kilometers an hour. And we haven't even gone past the... Um, what's that? That's the forest. We've only just gone past the forest. 130 it's going to be about 150 by the time we get to the coal mine isn't it and remember this bit is a small incline I think 
Yeah. This is much better. I mean, the level crossings are still on the way down as we plow through it at 160 kilometers an hour. Now we're going across this little crest down into this section. I think it's doing much better. The level crossings are definitely too um, slow. You reckon top speed speed before the main bridge, Tinman? Ooh, I think you might be right. It's going to be close. We're at 200 kilometers an hour by the time we get to the uh, the iron bridges. So we're going past that town. There's a town over on our right-hand side now. And the bridge is just about to come up. So I think you're wrong, Tinman. Not very wrong. Just a little bit wrong. There's the bridge, and we got onto the bridge at 222 kilometers an hour. We're still accelerating, but... It's... We did better, right, this time? I can't remember what speed we entered in last time. Oh, we've got a new viewer plus subscriber. That is fantastic. Here we go, look. 247 at the moment. 250. 254. Okay, so we got up to about 254 before starting to slow down. So I think that's better. Well, thank you very much to our viewer plus subscriber. That is fantastic that that has come through uh, there on the chat. Uh, let's just see. Did it come on the Discord? Let's have a look. Discord, Discord. Yes, it did. So it might come up on stream. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see. You think last time was about 250? Slightly faster. But it is longer. The, tr the train is longer. Oh my goodness, we're upside down again. Ugh. Yeah, this train is much longer. Carries more people as well. Uh, I kind of think it's neither here nor there. Although there's, a f there's 48 passengers on board now, so hopefully... Before the end of the live stream, we'll see how much money that makes carrying 48 passengers from one side of the map to the other. I say from one side of the map. There's actually uh, a little island over here with a uh, chemical plant on it. Then the town that we're visiting. And on the other side of the map, we have got our town on the coast. There is another little island over here with a farm on it, but it's like all the way across the mainland. Which is quite nice. We've still got a few of the older trains running, look. Which is nice. I think they're still making money. Yeah, it's currently at 25% capacity, but I hope, I hope that's going to improve. And I think it might improve now we've moved the trams, and also now that we've done these uh, road vehicles as well. So there's 18 people at the station waiting at the moment. Steam trains in 2001? Yeah, why not? This town isn't that huge as well. We should probably look at maybe stealing some of these cardboard boxes that are getting produced. Where are they getting produced? Which were over here? That's where the bricks are getting produced. Is this where we're picking up the goods? Oh, look, we're bringing them here to this town. Oh, we don't want to do that. We want to bring them all the way down to that town. Oh, let's let's move that now. Let's do that. Um, truck unload stop. So it wants to be right around here. We want to travel that extra mile and do that. I mean, there's no road. So we're going to have to fix that. Um, I 
There we go. Go through here. And then... Somewhere over there will connect it up. The UK was using steam trains until the 60s, so that's not quite unrealistic, apparently. I mean, in some ways it's a little bit, but... We can't really afford to replace them at the moment. So there we go, we've just changed the line there. It's all going to go horribly wrong because we've got road vehicles that are stuck. But we will just create a junction here. There we are, they're now no longer stuck. And then we'll manage these vehicles, we'll manage the line... We'll add a station to say, hey, come all the way down here and drop them off. And we'll get rid of this one in the middle. And there we go. So now we're, we're, now we're not just feeding a random town. I mean, it's not just a random town. It is a town that would be nice if it was growing. But we're feeding our mainline town down here, which is good. We also need cogs. Ideally. And where are we making them? All the way down here. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe we need a new cog making stuff over here. In fact, there is actually a stuff that makes everything look. So we get the, the two different balls. We bring it in here. Yeah. Okay, we might have to do that next time to try and get this town to grow. Because at the minute, we've only got three passengers on the platform. Oh well, the train is leaving now. Let's have a look at the finances. Ooh, okay, so the train is almost paying for itself at the moment, which is interesting. That's good. If we can make this main line busy and people want to use it, then we're in a good position to make a lot of money because that train is only a tiny bit full. And if we can get multiple trains going up and down there that are completely full, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. <sighs> well, folks, we are going to leave it there for now. Um, main reason being that uh, I'm I'm still taking it easy. I, I still technically have COVID right now. I'm not testing positive yet. Um, and I'm trying not to ever do it, just in case. One thing we will do is jump back in the game and we will name um, one of the trains after the Viewer Plus subscribers, though. So you can see down here in the list we've got a number of people that are Viewer Plus subscribers and they've been they've got their name in the game. And we're going to name this train that we put in today, train number one. And we're going to name it after the next thank you on the Viewer Plus subscriber page. And that is... Haha! <laughs> Foxtren! Our, our very own X Astrin. Congratulations. I don't think you're already in the game. No, you're not. You're not already in the game. And folks, if you are enjoying the live streams, then don't forget that we have our live stream on um, Thursday, where I will do a, uh, a stream. Excuse me. I'm trying to do three things at once. Uh, where I'll do my normal Skyrim stream. It might be slightly shorter. And um, we'll also then next week do our ARC server launch. So I've actually lost it. Oh, there it is. I found it. So I'm looking forward to the ARC, uh, the, um, the ARC server launch. It's We've tested it quite extensively. My computer doesn't like running it unless it's in DirectX 10. For some reason, I don't know why. Uh, I've lost the new train. Uh, there it is. So there we go, folks. There's the new train. Named after our viewer plus subscriber of the stream. So thank you very much to everybody who's a viewer plus subscriber. 
I think this train is probably going to make nearly half a million. Let's see. Let's see what it makes. Hey, Frog Strand. And it is. I didn't see it. It didn't pop up because I was in the wrong camera mode. I think. Hmm. Not sure. Damn. Okay, we'll have to have to check that out next time as well. Okay, folks. I hope you are all doing good. Thank you very much to all of the viewer plus subscribers that keep this channel running, keep all the costs being paid so that I can create content for you guys. If you are thinking about becoming a viewer plus subscriber, now is a fantastic time. Uh, Arc is in the Steam sale, I believe is less than £10 at the moment in the Steam sale, and our server launch is on Monday. I hope to see you on Thursday, and then again next week for that. Don't forget our Open TTD and other games, public games that are going to be happening, not this coming Saturday, but Saturday next week in our championship event. And we'll see you all soon. Yes, it was Brandon, but... Um, we tried to get people to get it. We tried to get everybody to get it. That's going to be all from me tonight, folks. Take care. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.